I'll do that in a second. Hello and welcome to our Friday webinar. We are on with Dr. Stephanie Lamb. Welcome, Dr. Lamb. Hello. Um, hello. And then behind you, um, who do we have with this? We've got your blue and gold macaw. Yeah, my blue and gold macaw. Her name's Ema. I gave her a foraging toy, so she may be making a little bit of noise in the back like that right now on cue uh, for tearing it apart. But hopefully she'll find some stuff in there that'll be a little bit more quiet. <laughs> okay. All right. That's, yeah, she's, she's uh, kind of going just doing a little busy work there with the yep. foraging. Um, okay. So let's see. We, uh, I guess I love, I love seeing all the highs uh, in our chats because it tells us where everyone's coming from and, and, um, and I just want to say, so let's see, let's rewind this to last, last weekend, uh, Saturday to be, oh, uh, last Saturday, this last Saturday, we got to meet in person, which was awesome. We were at the, um, both uh, Dr. Lamb and I were at the AFA conference in Costa Mesa, California. And, uh, you know, you, you flew in for a really quick, but important uh, topic on uh, chickens yep. and foraging and all that good stuff. It was a really good talk. Um, uh and a lot of good takeaways, even if you don't have chickens. Like I found so many fascinating takeaways and then also ones for my flock at home. Um, good. But uh, yeah, that was so cool that you were, I mean, I, you're busy, busy, busy. Cause you literally just set time and your day apart to fly in and give a talk and you had to go back cause you had to go back to work the next day. So kudos right. to that. <laughs> that is dedication right there. <laughs> well, um, I'm glad to do it. it was a lot of fun. And I'm glad I got to meet a lot of the people who are viewers. Um, that was really nice to be able to connect in a different way. I never get to see your guys' faces out there. So I'm appreciative that I, I met so many people. Yes, I want to give a shout out. Let's see. Um, Melanie, Melanie was there. Uh, Bob and um, his wife, Pat, were there. And uh, Adrian. Uh, so it was really good to meet all you guys um, at the at the FA. Um, it was really awesome to see him in person. So it was kind of like a little, it was kind of a, um, a really interesting uh, 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 opportunity to kind of meet people that we see virtually. So I was yeah, excited. For sure. <laughs> All right. So, and then uh, I'm hoping that we also had some people um, that were going to be logging in, I think for, uh, that we met at the AFA to log into our webinars for the first time. So I hope that you're enjoying this. And if you are, welcome. And uh, you're in for a treat because Dr. Uh, Dr. Lamb is one of the best that we, <laughs> she's been, she was our first uh, webinar person and, and, and she comes on every month and generates, uh, is very generous with her time. So um, I am going to make you a co-host because I'm sure I'm going to guess you have a fabulous presentation. Yep, exactly. I've, got a, I've got a PowerPoint made up for us today. So um, I can go ahead and start sharing my screen here and we can get started. All right, here we go. Oh, I the topic, uh, sorry. The, the uh, what, what it's like going to the vet from your bird's point of view. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we wanted to talk about this because, you know, most of the time, in the lectures that I'm giving, I'm, I'm talking about like the science and everything and um, all of the things from the human perspective and from the veterinary perspective. And, you know, there's another perspective that we have not been touching on too much. And it's the perspective of the bird, right? There's multiple people involved. There's the vet, there's the owner, and there's the bird. And the bird is the most important one that's coming to the vet. The bird is the one who is um, having themselves looked at, um, you know, touched and, and samples taken and all sorts of things done. Um, and so it makes you start to wonder sometimes, what are they thinking? What is, what's going through their mind with all of this? Um, and I have to say, like, as a veterinarian, it's, it's not uncommon that when we have a patient in the back and we're doing something, we'll, we'll ask that question. Like, what do you think they're thinking about this? What do you think is going through their their little mind they must think we're so weird because we're doing xyz thing so what i'm going to try to do today is go over from the bird's perspective what it's like to come to the vet and of course i'm not a bird i'm a human so of course i'm having to anthropomorphize a little bit here and take some guesses on what i think they're thinking um so and i also want to say it's important to recognize that every bird is an individual so some of the stuff i'm going to be saying well maybe not all birds feel that way about coming to the vet and the experience but we're going to try to try to go over what it's like for them so let's get started all right so the first step is the carrier when a bird sees a carrier they know something's up you know that carrier is usually symbolic of something different that's going to happen today i might not necessarily know 
what different thing is going to happen, but I know I don't always see that carrier sitting around all the time. And I know that when I go into that carrier, I'm usually leaving the house and I'm going somewhere. Now, maybe that somewhere is going to be to the groomers. Uh, maybe that somewhere is going to be boarding somewhere. Maybe that somewhere is going over to a family member's house. So I get to see a different environment and different people um, and interact with different things. Or maybe that carrier is taking me to that weird person that they call the vet and they're going to touch me and things are going to be a little different. Um, so that carrier, uh, Definitely can be the first thing that bird sees that recognizes, makes it recognize something different is going on today. Now, depending on who you are, you might have a difference in opinion of what that carrier means. This little Amazon here, this is a royal. I showed him the carrier because I wanted to see what he thought. And you can see a royal's looking into that carrier. And, you know, for me, looking at him and thinking, what's going through his little mind, what I see with his little face, with his little eyes in that first picture all the way to the left there, um, those eyes look a little bit excited. He's going, hmm, this is interesting. What's inside of here? I think I want to check it out. And when he looks inside and sees that center of that carrier, which is what the central image is, it's just maybe to us humans, this plastic box that's just this little weird cavity. Um, but for a bird, that little cavity might be a really cool place to hang out because a lot of our parrots are cavity nesters. A lot of them like to go into small little places to hang out, whether it be for resting for nesting is really the biggest thing. Um, and sometimes maybe feeling a little hormonal inside of there. So from a royal's perspective, his perspective of when he sees a carrier is, hey, this is pretty neat. I like this carrier. I do want to go into this uh, little dark cavity. And you can see in that last picture, there he is like actually desperately trying to climb into the carrier. I was actually trying to pull the carrier away. And he was like, no, I want to get inside. Please let me in, let me in. And so he's really working hard to actually get in there. Now that he's actually inside the carrier, because he stepped in, he's just checking it out, looking all around, seeing how not spacious it actually is. But as a cavity nester, a not spacious place is actually pretty cool. That's a nice place to hang out um, because it's protected. It's a little darker. It's a little quieter. And you know, in the center picture there, you can see he's kind of looking through the little holes. So he's got a place to check out. He's thinking to himself probably, all right, this is this is nice. It's small. It's cozy. It's safe. Nobody else is in here. I feel pretty protected. And I've got some little peepholes to look out the windows and see what's going on outside there. And that last picture, I mean, it almost looks to me like he's smiling uh, in that photo there because he's got a pretty... Um, large people. Um, so a large people is a little bit more indication of I'm content. Everything is sort of okay here. Um, he's not fluffing his feathers. They're kind of nice and just sleek against his body, but not so sleek to where he looks really skinny. He's just going, this is really cool. I could hang out here all day. You know what? I'm totally fine with a carrier. There's no problems with a carrier. Take me wherever you want. I am happy to be transported inside of this thing. Versus other birds may not be so excited about seeing that carrier. So for some individuals, they see the carrier and they go, you know what? I know that carrier means I'm going somewhere. Man, eh, I don't really like going anywhere. I like home just fine. I'd rather stay in my house. This is my one of my African greys, Gigi. She is definitely a homebody. She does not want to leave the house ever. She does not care to go visit with any one else. She'd just prefer to stay at home and not be bothered. So Gigi's opinion is more along the lines of, um, 
thank you, but no, I will stay home. And you can see that in her body language. Uh, I'm bringing my hand towards the carrier to try to put her in. And she's leaning away. Those first two pictures there, um, she is like hanging off of my hand uh, because she does not want to get in. So when she's looking in that carrier, she's going, you know what? That carrier means I'm going somewhere I don't want to go. I'm going somewhere that, you know, maybe things are going to happen that I'm not too interested in having happen. I do not want to get inside of that tank carrier. Thank you very much. And I am going to do my best to get away from you um, and not go into that carrier. Now, I will say what I usually have to do with Gigi is because she is pretty resistant to getting into the carrier. I mean, as you guys can see with these two first images here, she is backing up and does not want to go in. Usually what I have to do is I have to turn my hand around and have her go in backwards. So her tail is introduced first. Then she's usually a little bit better about it. And that last photo there is me stepping her down into the carrier. But actually, as I was stepping her down, she was really trying to just hang on to my hand because she really just wanted to come right back out. Uh, because again, I think with her, her opinion is, no, I don't want to go to the vet. I am not interested in getting into this carrier. This is not exciting. This is not fun. This is something that's not enjoyable today, and I'd rather stay home. So I'm going to show you that I want to stay. Now, I do want to just mention that there's lots of different types of carrier designs that are out there. So the pictures that I show you here, this is just one type of carrier. This is like a classical pet carrier that you would think of for like a cat or maybe a small dog. Um, and they work well for birds. They work well for rabbits, guinea pigs, you know, several different species, but not all birds like them. Gigi does not like this type of carrier. You know, she's saying it in her face right there. I don't want to go to the vet. Um, so you can get different types. Now, this picture is um, a Wingabago uh, carrier, and so it's meant specifically for birds. And so it's plastic on all sides, so it's see-through. Um, so you can see that they're able to see out okay. And I actually have Arroyo and Maureen, my other African gray. Uh, so Gigi actually was not in doesn't like this carrier either. Um, but, you know, just trying to show that there are other types of carriers. So if your bird doesn't like one type of carrier and maybe it has had some maybe maybe um, negative sort of opinions or experiences associated with the carrier, there's plenty of other carriers out there and designs and types that you can try that your bird may be a little bit more okay with going into. Um, looking at both Arroyo and Maureen in this photo, they look pretty calm and relaxed. I don't know that they were super excited about being in there together because you can tell that there's a uh, little bit of a distance between the two of them. So from that perspective, sometimes when we have birds getting into carriers together to go to the vet, um, you know, they're probably sometimes thinking to themselves, why am I in this carrier with whoever I am with right now. Uh, do I really want to be hanging out this close to somebody? Or other times, maybe they're like, oh, my best friend's here. We're going somewhere together. Okay, as long as I've got my best friend, everything's okay. I'm relaxed. I'm calm. Life is all right. Okay, now the next step of getting to the vet, getting into the car, you know, traveling in the car, um, it could be fun, could be exciting. It could also be a little bit scary. Uh, so if we look at the first photo over here, I actually have several of my pets. This is where we were going on a little bit of a trip out of um, a few hours away. Um, and so I've got Ema right there in this carrier. Arroyo is actually back here. You can't see him very well because he's kind of camouflaged by all sorts of toys. And then Maureen, uh, my uh, one of my greys, um, she's actually down in this tiny little carrier and she actually loves that little carrier. So it's a small carrier and it's actually a carrier that's usually used more for like guinea pigs. Um, but I have to say that is the carrier that she likes. Like she will go into that carrier no problem. And I think it goes back to the fact that when she gets in there, it's a tiny little nest cavity. She can be nice and cramped up in there, which I'm like, uh, don't you want more space? But she, she really, uh, giving her the options, she likes that tiny little thing where she's kind of just like cramped and able to feel probably comfortable. I imagine that she feels like she is in sort of a cavity nest. It's dark. It's quiet. Nobody else is in there with her that's a little bit more calming and relaxing for her than having to sit in like the carrier with Arroyo in the last pictures. Now, 
again, difference of opinion in traveling in the car. So Arroyo actually tends to do really well in the car. When he's traveling in the car, he's excited, he's singing, he is trying to look out the windows if he can, uh, and life's really exciting to see things going past. If we've got a big truck going past, he may be doing some vocalizations, he may be really paying attention, straining his neck to have a look. He's really going, wow, this is neat. There's lots out there in the world. Life is fun. Same with Ima. Ima's more interested in activities and things going around on in the car. She likes to, um, or she appears to really like the uh, hustle and bustle of things moving around. Versus Maureen down there, no, she prefers that tiny little dark cavity where nobody can see her and she can do her own little thing. So these two are having a blast. They're singing, they're dancing around. The car is great. The car is fun. Going to the vet in the car, fabulous, wonderful. Maureen, eh, you know what? Car is not so exciting. Um, and when you have a chicken driving the car, you know, it's not maybe the best driver in the world. Um, so no, the chicken wasn't driving the car, but she wanted to drive the car. We stopped to get some gas and she decided that she was gonna, uh, you know, drive us the rest of the way. You know, she was just uh, hanging out there and being like, yeah, it's fine. I know how to drive. I've got my license. It's good. I've seen you drive. You guys just hang out in the back. I'll take you anywhere. <laughs> um, so- You're <laughs> She can do it all. Um, but, you know, I also put this picture up here because we're all different drivers, right? We're all humans have different styles with driving. And so I would bet that our pets recognize those different styles in our drivings and probably do better with some owners than others with driving styles. Um, maybe some really like it when their owners drive fast. Again, maybe Arroyo and Ima would find that exciting. Maureen, I don't think so. She's not interested in that. But other birds are going to like it when they have people who are a little bit more cautious, courteous drivers, slower, um, make, trying to make it just a relaxed environment. So probably don't have a chicken drive the, the, anybody to the vet. Um, not recommended, but they might ask. All right. Now, what happens at the vet? So we got into the carrier, we knew something was happening, we get into the car, we see all these things going around, you know, we're sitting in this weird like room with an owner and the room is like moving, odd, right? And we maybe hear like weird music that we don't normally hear, we see things going by, finally this weird room that we're moving and stops and the owner picks us up in the carrier and brings us into this totally different space. And they take the carrier and they put it down on a countertop. And then this weird person walks into the room and is smiling at them and is looking at them and maybe talking, but ooh, who's this weird person? I've never seen them before. I, I'm not really interested in this random human coming up to interact with me. And then when this really weird human does something like this and reaches in with this giant hand to grab them, most birds aren't super excited about that. Most individuals are like, whoa, 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 hold on a second. Who are you? And why are you entering my space? I didn't allow for this. I didn't want you to come in here. If I'm the type of bird who thinks that this carrier is really cool, and this is like my nice little nest cavity, and I really actually like it, you better believe I'm gonna defend uh, this carrier against you because this is my little nest, and I don't need your giant hand reaching in there and trying to grab me. Um, so that's where the vet might actually get a little nip on their finger to from the, the bird saying, no, you're not allowed in here. Um, if you're the kind of bird that is more along the lines of, I don't really like being in the carrier, I don't wanna be in the carrier, uh, and now this weird, crazy person that I don't know who they are is reaching their gigantic hand in to grab me. Ugh, this is even more scary. So maybe I'm even actually a little more heightened and nervous than normal because I didn't want to come to the vet in the first place. Maybe I didn't want to ride in the car with maybe that fast driver and I like a slow driver. And now I'm here at the vet with this weird person that I don't know and they're trying to reach in here and grab me. Hold on a second. This is overwhelming. This is way too much going on. And maybe I need to finally tell someone something about it and to leave me alone. And again, give a little bit of a nip. So um, I put this picture in here of me reaching in with this giant hand, uh, but I have certainly learned you don't reach in with a giant hand like that. What's much better to do and often more accepted is that last photo there where I'm just showing my hand. I have 
my hand reached up in a position that's asking the bird, can you step up for me? Would you like to step up for me? It's good to give a bird an option. Now, some birds are going to see that and go, oh, I know what that command is. Yeah, I'm ready to come out of here. I'll go ahead and step up just fine. Great. Thanks for thanks for getting me out. I don't know who you are, but I'm, I'm okay with this. Whereas other individuals are like, again, I don't know who you are. This is all weird. I'd rather stay inside of this carrier. No, thank you. I'm not going to step up. I'm not coming out. Great for extending your hand. That was very polite of you, human being. But human being, no, thank you. I will stay inside of my carrier. And you're going to have to figure something else out if you want to get me out of here. Okay, now once the vet gets the bird out of the carrier, now, you know, what are they doing? What does this vet want with me? Here again is this weird person. I don't know who they are. Uh, they've got this weird snake that's colorful, hanging out of their ears and dangling off their neck. And it's got this weird like circle on the end of it. And they're coming towards me with this. What are they doing? What is this crazy human being trying to do? Why did my beloved owner bring me here? Because I don't know, but I'm starting to think that all humans are crazy, other than maybe the one that I really love so much because they're the greatest person in the world. But everybody else, I don't know about this. Who is this weird human being and what could they possibly want with their colorful snake that's hanging off of their neck? So one thing that I often will ask as the veterinarian um, is of the bird is, do you want to touch it? Do you want to touch this weird colorful snake with the weird thing on the end of it? Because a lot of birds don't know what that stethoscope is that's coming towards them. Again, weird colorful snake, that's what's going through their mind. Um, and sometimes if they can just touch it and recognize, oh, wait, it's not a snake. It's not alive. It's some weird, hard plastic metal thing, but it's not alive, okay. Maybe it's fine. I don't think it's going to hurt me. Maybe it is. I don't know. But like, I'm less afraid of it if I get to touch it maybe and feel it because I can now recognize that it's not something alive that might want to eat me. Um, so I'll ask the birds, can I, can I have hold this up to you? Sometimes it's very clear that they don't want it held up to them. And so this is a picture of Maureen here. Um, and she is giving a little bit more body language saying she's not too interested in me having that stethoscope up against her because look at what she's doing again she's as Gigi was in those couple of pictures where she's like backing off of my hand not wanting to get into the carrier that's what Maureen's doing here too she's actually trying to lean back on my hand and you can tell that because here's her little feet like really far forward and her chest and tail are kind of further back and so she was a little more apprehensive about that stethoscope coming up to her what is that thing I don't know I don't know if I really want to mess with that. I guess I'll touch it and make sure it's okay, but mm, I don't know that I want it towards me too much. Versus Ema here, you can tell now it's not as close to her, like as it is with the picture with Maureen, but Ema's feeling it. She's not leaning off the back of my hand. She's just touching it. And look at her little tongue too. That tongue is so tactile and that tongue allows them to explore. It. And so for her, she's probably saying, okay, I don't know what this thing is, but hmm, let me feel what's the texture. Okay. It feels kind of cold and hard on one side, but on the other side, it's like more, uh, not as cold. It's more this plasticky sort of thing. And what's this weird little rubber edge? Ooh, can I pull this thing apart? Because that's so much fun. And I'd love to just destroy this. That would be great. Uh, you know, getting just a little bit more accepting of it that, hey, it's not so bad. It's it's actually not going to do anything too awful. So because Ema was giving me, the veterinarian, the signals that it's okay, this isn't too bad, um, we went ahead and were able to listen to her a little bit more without having to restrain her. So you can see that the first picture, I'm holding the stethoscope up against her chest there where I can hear her heart. And you can see she has given a little bit of signals to say, eh, I don't know, she kind of is leaning back a little bit to the side, but she's letting it happen. She's like, okay, I felt it. That thing wasn't too awful. It didn't seem like it was alive. I could tell it's not, you know, it's it's um, an inanimate object. 
Um, it seems like it's okay. Let me go ahead and I'm all right. I guess you can touch it to me, but maybe I don't really like it so much on the front of my chest versus when we move it to the back along her chest where I can hear the lungs sometimes a little bit better. Um, you can see she's a little bit more relaxed there. She's kind of like, oh, okay, you know, this isn't so bad. Yeah, I've got that weird thing around me, but again, I know it's not real. I know it's fake. I know it's, you know, just some weird plastic thing that humans like to have around. Um, but it looks like we're really more just kind of cuddling right now. You know, we're just hanging out. Everything's okay. Um, and to the point of like this picture here, you can see her eye is more that like almond shape that people will sometimes describe of a, a bird showing they're a little bit more content when they have an almond eye. Um, just a little bit more relaxed. I'm okay with this. Yeah it's not so bad everything's okay um versus when i try that with maureen she's still not so sure maureen is going you know what mm, no that thing's still suspicious i felt it i licked it i could tell that it's not a living thing but you know what again you humans are really odd and particularly you odd veterinarians that like to hold weird objects up against birds and touch weird objects against me i'm not so sure about this i think that i would rather you not do this right now and she's trying to she's giving me a lot of signals saying no i do not want to have this right now so you know from her perspective the stethoscope is not cool not okay versus birds like arroyo who are anti-stethoscope arroyo is not into stethoscopes he thinks stethoscopes are extremely scary to the point where i can't even let the stethoscope up to him. If he sees that stethoscope coming towards him, oh my gosh, what is that? Is that a snake? I don't know. I don't want to touch it. I don't know I have anything to do with that. That is terrifying. Is it going to wrap itself around me? Am I going to get constricted? Oh my gosh, that stethoscope is weird. Keep it as far away from me as possible. And then later on, when the stethoscope is uh, laying on a surface and it seems easier and safer to approach, Arroyo did and broke it. <laughs> and pulled off the end pieces, which is like a very important functional part of the stethoscope. So uh, Arroyo uh, probably felt really good after doing that because he conquered his fears of that awful stethoscope that's very, very scary on a veterinarian, and he killed it and dismembered it, and he won. But is he going to be okay with stethoscopes in the future? Probably not. He's probably still going to want to kill any stethoscope that he sees because you can't trust a stethoscope. You never know what it's going to do. All right. The next thing after, you know, the veterinarian uh, kind of listening to them and working with that weird stethoscope is, gosh, they're really interested in getting really close and having a real close look at me like all over like why are they staring at me with their gigantic eyeballs that are on the forward forward portion of their face you know that's actually kind of scary that's a predator as a bird i recognize predators have their eyeballs in front of their face not on the sides of their face so this weird human is looking at me really close with their two gigantic eyeballs and that's kind of scary because I think they might be a predator and I don't know what's going through their mind and what they're thinking. Why are they getting so close and looking at me like this? Now, some birds may think that's really cool. Some birds may be like, like cockatoos, you know, certain cockatoos, uh, may be a little bit more like, ooh, how fun. This human being's like getting really close and we're gonna get really social and I'm excited about them like looking at me really closely and intently and, and everything. Mm -hmm. Versus other birds like Royal here is like, you know, I think that's kind of scary. I am not interested in this. I don't know what's gonna happen next. So mm, I'm gonna kind of keep my distance if I can. All right, now is towel time. So sometimes towel time comes before this. And I will say a lot of times towel time comes before all these other things. Um, 
it really depends on the individual bird and kind of those signals that they're showing. If they're showing a lot of signals that are saying, hey, I don't want to be touched. I am not going to be okay with you holding that stethoscope up to me. Tell time honestly is going to come a little bit sooner because the veterinarian does need to be able to touch the bird to do an appropriate physical exam. If the veterinarian isn't able to touch them and feel them and really get a good, um, you know, palpation, then they're not doing a good job of, you know, getting the most basic, simple diagnostic done, which is the physical examination. And so a lot of times the veterinarian does have to put them into a towel so that we can feel them all over and we try to do it as quick as we can so that we're not holding the bird in the towel for too excessive or too long of periods of time so that they're being a little less stressed as best as we possibly can. But for different birds, towel time is... Well, it can mean different things. Many birds are not super excited about towel time. And Maureen here is one of those birds who's not super excited about towel time. So she is here um, demonstrating what it's like to be held in a towel. But in her mind, she is wondering, I am in this towel. This is not very fun. I would like to be out of this towel as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Now. As I've mentioned, different individuals may have different opinions. So for some, getting in a towel actually isn't so bad. For some of them, it's like cuddling with your friend. And I just have these two pictures of these um, mustache parakeets together where they're kind of cuddled up right next to each other. And, and that close contact can make them feel really um, safe sometimes and secured. And some birds actually putting them in a towel gets that sort of close contact that makes them feel safe and secured and you know tell time actually isn't so bad for some birds for some individuals it's okay they feel that you know uh compression and everything actually makes them feel a little bit safer versus others this is a picture of my dog um, and i tried to make it be a cute picture of him laying on his back uh showing his teeth to us uh <laughs> so it wasn't you know too scary of course um but for some for some birds being in that towel is the equivalent of getting grabbed by a predator, you know, because how often is a bird actually being held in the wild? It, it's the, like never, right? Like they never really have something draped over them. Unless of course they're in this teeny tiny little um, cavity nest or something like that, or cuddling with friends. So again, there's variability um, in how they may interpret this, but for some they may interpret it as, oh my gosh, I'm inside the mouth of a predator. This predator now has me, I've been grabbed. Only bad things are going to happen next. The towel is terrifying because I am not supposed to be held down like this. I need to be a free bird. This is not cool. I am not okay with it. Um, I do usually, as a veterinarian, recommend if, if like I'm seeing a young bird that's coming into the office, um, their first visit, we try to keep things really kind of calm and relaxed as best we can for the bird. Uh, but I'll talk with owners about getting them used to being covered in some way. So this is Ema, um, who's, you know, right there. Um, and we were getting her used to just being covered with a towel by throwing laundry over her. So we had actually like finished like cleaning the laundry, right? And like we had got it out of the dryer and like had thrown it onto the bed. And she saw us like throwing the laundry on the bed and she got really excited. It was like, what are you doing? Oh my gosh, this is really interesting. And so we set her down and she actually went over and started like picking up some of the laundry and playing with it and just like throwing it all over the place. So I threw my association of avian vets little um, cardigan over her because it looked cute. It was a photo op, but also what is this doing? This is kind of wrapping her up in some fabric that is in a non-threatening manner. We're just having fun. We're playing. Everything's okay. Being wrapped up in some sort of fabric isn't so bad. It's okay. Sometimes we're just, uh, you know, having a good time. And if you look at her feathers, like on top of her head, you can see her feathers are kind of puffed up on the top of her head. Um, and that is more of a content appearance, you know, depending upon the species, of course, that we're talking about, feathers puffed up on top of the head don't necessarily always mean that we're a content bird. And in fact, in some individuals, it means we're a really excited bird. It means we may be feeling, um, you know, excited in a good way, uh, excited in a sexual way, excited in a, an angry way. I mean, feather 
fluffing of, on the top of the head can mean various things. But in this context, when it was happening, reading her body language in all other ways was actually saying that, hey, this is fine. Everything's OK. And so playing with her like this just at home when you're doing chores um, is good because it teaches them that a towel or something draped over them nobody's coming to eat them nobody's coming to hurt them we are just playing we're having a good time everything's okay there's no problems here um another thing that i have recognized with birds when they're in the towel is they usually want something to hold on to birds in a towel I have to think, are probably thinking to themselves, okay, I'm in this towel, this is weird, this person's holding me up, but my feet are dangling and I don't have anything to hold on to. And I would really like something to hold on to because you know what, normally when I'm standing, I'm grabbing onto something, I'm grabbing onto a perch or you know, I'm standing on a flat surface. I'm somewhere where my feet are in contact with something. And now all of a sudden my feet are up in the uh -huh. air, just dangling there. And that's totally unnatural. I don't like this, this is weird. Why are my feet just splayed out there? In the picture to the left, Maureen is actually showing her feet just kind of out there in the open. It's like they're, this one in particular, her uh, left foot here is like, look how open it is. She's missing the tip of one of her toes. Um, so you can see how open that foot is. And it's just saying like, please put something here because I want to grab onto something, right? And so what we did is we just put a little portion of the towel underneath her and she immediately grabbed it, like immediately. And I have to imagine that because most birds do, most birds, you hold something up to them and they are ready to grab onto something, whether that's your finger or the towel or even a perch, or I've, I've held up like a pen to a bird before, or sometimes they grab the weird, colorful, dangly snake around my neck and hold on to that, you know, um, because they just want something to hold on to. And I have to imagine that once they get that thing grasped around their feet, they're probably thinking to themselves, okay, thank you. I have got something to hold on to. I definitely prefer to be holding on to something. This is more comfortable. This is at least a little bit better than when I was like this. So um, for anybody who's holding a bird in a towel, just keep that in mind that they like to hold on to things. So they can probably do a little bit better and be a little bit happier when they have something to grasp onto. So giving them something to, to get those feet around um, is really, I think, quite nice for them. Um, and then this picture here, um, this is Maureen, again, demonstrating for us. She's such a good demo bird for physical exams and everything. She's showing us how that sometimes it's okay to just go without a towel. There's many birds out there that I've met that actually, they don't like that towel at all. That towel comes towards them and they're screaming and they're upset and they're, they're not, not into it. But if I just hold them sometimes without the towel and do my physical exam, that's a little bit better. It's a little safer because for those individuals, they probably do uh, have some sense of when I'm in the towel, I'm being held in the mouth of a predator and it is scary and I don't like it. But when I'm not in a towel, I have a little bit more freedom to move my wings if I want to, or move my feet if I want to. Maureen in this picture, you can't see it very well, but she is actually grabbing onto that scary colorful snake around my neck of the stethoscope um, and she's getting some support there. Now this doesn't work for every bird because some birds when they're like this, they're too wiggly, too wiggly and they're throwing their wings all around and their legs all around and they can hurt themselves. And that is the last thing anybody wants to have happen. So some birds do absolutely need to be in a towel, but for some individuals being out of a towel, they will handle it okay. And that is something that we just have to like take it case by case to see what individual is going to be okay with the towel or not with the towel or how they're going to act. And I would say from, again, my human perspective, it seems like the macaws, like I've had more macaws do okay out of a towel um, than any other uh, species of birds out there. Um, that's just my personal perspective and opinions. So I don't know, I could be kind of wrong about saying that, like maybe that's just me misinterpreting things. I don't know. Uh, but it seems like the macaws tend to do a little bit better. Um, in my experience, more of them are better out of the towel 
um, than other species of birds. Like some species, they just sit there and they flap and they flap and they flap. And again, we don't want them to hurt themselves. So we, we can't necessarily have them do that. All right, now back to the bird's perspective of, well, now we're in this towel. We know that they've held the stethoscope up. We know that they've looked at us really close, but then they also do other really weird things where they like lift our wing up and look underneath the wing. Like, why do they have to do that? That's my that's my wing pit. I don't need anybody looking in there, but for some reason, these veterinarians want to look underneath my wing and feel my wing, which is odd. Or maybe they're touching my toes. This is really weird. Why is this human being uh, holding my toes and feeling them and looking at them and inspecting them. Um, and then even more so beyond that is when they do those things and they start to hold this weird object up against the toenail and I feel this weird vibration against the toenail and what the heck is that? As humans, it's the Dremel that we're using to like Dremel down the toenail, take those toenails down in length and make them a little bit nicer for us humans. But for a bird, oh my God, what is that weird sounding loud noise that's coming towards my foot? And now it's like rubbing up rapidly against my toe. Like, this is very weird. Again, why do humans do such crazy things? I don't understand. Um, and then for birds who end up getting their wings trimmed, holding that wing up and then having this human come towards them with some weird metal object that's cutting across my wings and doing making weird shapes out of my feathers hold on a second why are you doing that what is what is up with these really odd humans doing these crazy things and even more weird things that veterinarians do uh why are you holding up this cold probe against my body and you put alcohol you put some weird liquid on my skin that smells funny and then you put this weird gooey gel all over my skin and you're kind of getting some of my feathers messed up here like why are you doing this what is going on why would you even think to to that i would enjoy this in some way you very crazy human being um even when the humans are being nice and this is my chicken here uh she was uh, being an assistant for a lab uh, for learning about ultrasounds in birds. Um, and, you know, she was a very, very good girl. Um, but I'm sure in her mind, she was like, I don't understand why I came here in the first place and why they're holding this weird probe against me. And they're not even paying attention to me. They're looking at that weird screen as if though that's really exciting and interesting. Like, why am I not the center of attention? They're just holding this thing, but they're looking at this weird picture. I don't know. I don't get it with these humans. And then they also, again, like to look sometimes in some weird places. Like they make me open up my mouth and they look inside of my mouth and I don't know why they are interested in looking inside of my mouth. This is very weird and odd and they always make me open my mouth really, really wide as well. Like, why do they do that? Can't I just like open my mouth for a second? No, they want me to open my mouth and hold it open and they want to like practically get inside of my mouth. I don't understand. And the other thing that's really super weird about veterinarians is for some reason, they are just really obsessed with bright lights. I don't get it. They have to hold this really bright light up and like angle this light in my eyeball. Why are they holding this light up to my eyeball? I am. I don't understand what sort of joy they're getting out of this bright shining light in my eye and then in my nose and then in my mouth and sometimes other places too. These bright lights that are coming at me are very awkward. And not only is those bright lights like weird of themselves, but you also, again, you got this weird looking predator with these forward facing eyeballs just like staring at me really close. These humans, man, I don't know. And then sometimes these veterinarians, they do weird things too. Like they put bandages on my feet or they put a cone around my neck. And how does this crazy veterinarian think I'm supposed to walk with this thing around my neck? And I don't really want this thing around my neck. Like, I also don't want these things on my feet. I'd really like to take these bandages off of my feet, but for some reason, this weird disc around my neck is making it so that I can't get these things off of my feet. You know what? I think I'll just focus on this Ava cake right now that's hanging in front of me because life is weird and I need something else to focus on and get my attention on because 
I don't understand what humans want with me, but I do like ape cakes and those are all right. <laughs> they make life better. Although sometimes when I go to the vet, I actually get some nice delicious things from a syringe and some things that taste pretty good. Sometimes they're fruity, sometimes they are sugary tasting, or sometimes they remind me of when I was a baby and I used to get hand fed. And that was really nice because when I was a baby, humans were so nice. They just came and they fed me all the time and they cuddled me and they talked to me. And that was really great. And you know what? When they bring that syringe of whatever up to my face, I'm thinking about that. And that makes me feel really good. And you know, I guess the vet isn't so bad all the time because sometimes they give me something that I like. Sometimes though, I really don't feel like going to the vet. Sometimes I am more interested in staying at home. I don't want to go to the vet. And sorry, but today I am going to give my human being like every reason to not take me to the vet. I'm not getting into that carrier. I'm not getting into that car. I am not getting out of the carrier at the vet. Like, no, none of this is happening today. So sometimes what we can do is we can sometimes do some things for those individuals. Like Arroyo here one day, the last time I had to bring him in to get his toenail trim, uh, he was saying that day, I'm not coming. <laughs> Today is not the day for me to go to the vet. And normally he's pretty good about coming, but not that day. <laughs> that day was a no day, but I still needed to bring him in because we had to get stuff done. So we did something to take the edge off. What we did was we gave him a little bit of medication inside of some delicious oatmeal here that he took as a treat um, so that we could go into that carrier a little bit more nicely, travel to the vet a little bit more nicely, and not care as much when we got to the vet about getting those toenails trimmed. So you can see how hyped up he is here. Look at that teeny tiny little pupil, bright eyes. He's looking at your face on, like he's not looking at you from the side. He is head on, like dead center, kind of trying to look at me. You can't see it well in this picture, but I think you can kind of tell that his tail is a little bit flared. The top of his head, his head feathers here are fluffed up. That's not a good fluffed up head feathers. That is a, I will bite you, fluffed up head feathers. Um, so that little bit of oatmeal that had some medications got him to this state where he's sleepy. <laughs> and he's perching, you know, he's perched, he's okay, but he's sleepy. And he went into that carrier a little bit more nicely. And then after being at the vet, because something happened there, but he wasn't quite sure what happened there because he got a little bit of extra stuff when he got to the vet and that made him feel real good and real nice and sleepy. And you know what? I think something's against my toenails, but I'm just taking a nap and I don't care what's going on. Everything's okay. So by the time we got home, he just had an afternoon nap. And here he is, his feathers are a little ruffled because he was in a towel. He was being held in a towel, so the feathers did get a little bit ruffled. Um, but he's just on his perch and he's like, we're home. I think I'm just gonna sleep now. Everything's okay. Um, so just a couple of other pictures of other birds. Uh, this is Gigi, one of my other African greys. Um, again, I, as I mentioned, she's a homebody. She does not like coming to the vet at all. Like it is her least favorite thing to come here to the, the, to the office. Um, and so when she has come here before, we've helped her as well by taking the edge off with giving her a little bit of medications. Uh -huh. um, and this this is a patient um, who, again, same thing, he was a bit nervous. So we gave him some medications just to make him feel a little bit more relaxed. Um, I wanted to bring it up because as we went through most of the stuff here, you could see that there's many opportunities for a bird to be a little bit nervous and scared coming to the vet. And you know, unfortunately there are sometimes where we have, we have to deal with that. Now we can manage that with, you know, the ways that we interact with them and trying to do things quickly and, um, you know, trying to set them up for success by, you know, preparing at home where they're getting used to appropriate care or carriers that they like, or, you know, having them used to being in a towel. But for some birds, it's really scary. They've had a lot of years of coming to the vet and it's just, it's, they're too worked up. And so we can give them medications in the office that make them 
that are just sedatives that make them feel sleepy, a little bit more relaxed, and a little bit easier to deal with for everybody. They tend to be a lot more calm. Well, they are because they're being sedated, but the the it makes the experience a little bit nicer for them. Um, and one of the medications we use, midazolam, it's probably the most common one that we'll use when we are sedating a patient to make things a little bit calmer and more relaxed for them. The nice thing about it is we actually, there's a reversal. So you can give them, when we're done with everything, we can give them the reversal, put them back into the carrier. And as that reversal is starting to take effect, they're already in the carrier, they're done, the owner's checking out, you know, going home, like it can be a little bit more nice for them. Um, so it is something that I would encourage you, like if your bird is pretty nervous about going to the vet, ask your vet, you know, ask, say, you know, hey, can we potentially do something like midazolam just to take the edge off? There might be situations where your veterinarian says, no, we don't want to do that for X, Y, Z reason. And it's important to respect that. But it's also, I think, important for your bird to, to ask that of your veterinarian. If you want to have this done, um, it's okay. You, you can ask. And I mean, I'll be honest, there's sometimes where we have busy day here that I'm just in like work mode. And I mean, I always think, sedation. But then if an owner says to me, hey, can we sedate? I'm like, oh yeah, of course we can do that. So sometimes as the veterinarian, even though it is my job to be the one to say, hey, we can do this. Um, sometimes because I'm in work mode and I'm working and I'm busy, sometimes I forget too. So it's okay to ask your veterinarian, hey, can we do this if it's something that you want to do? Now, some birds, I will say one of the things with the, one of the side effects of giving midazolam is for some birds, they will throw up. And in particular, I would say macaws are the most common one that will throw up with midazolam. I, I'm not too sure why exactly that is but they seem to be more predisposed to throwing up and she will like I will sedate her but I do expect that she's going to throw up um, so I often will not give her food for a couple of hours before we do something with her so that she doesn't really have anything to throw up and then I reverse her or there's certain things that we do that you know we just work without a towel or you know with a towel it just depends on what we're doing with her um, but but I will sometimes sedate her so um, you know, just important thing to, to know about and ask your vet about if you feel like it would be good for your bird. Now, uh, hopefully at the end of everything, the bird leaves the office. And even though there was lots of stuff that happened that may have been a little bit weird, hopefully when they get home, they get a good snack. They get something that is a reward that they get to say, the human says to the bird, you are a good bird today. You deserve something extra and special. And the bird can go, yes, I was. I was a very good bird. Even if I didn't feel like going to the vet, even if I screamed the whole time, even if I maybe bit the vet and made them bleed, um, I was still a good bird. I deserve a treat for going to the vet. Uh, just simply for going, I deserve a treat. So that's probably the best part of going to the vet from the bird's perspective is that snack that they get at the end of the day when everything is said and done. So um, that is, that's actually it. That's what I have for you guys. So let me stop sharing here. And then um, I'd love to take any questions that you guys have. Okay, first of all, I love this presentation. I, it's just, people were commenting that you should do a children's book. And I'm thinking, yes, you should. And then you should write one that we could read to our birds before we go to the bed. <laughs> like, there you go. Well, the time story tomorrow. You're good. Yeah, I love what you like going to the vet. This is what's going to happen to you. Yeah. It's going to be okay because you're going to get a snack at the very end. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. If you have a question, remember to use the, um, the Q&A button. Um, I kind of want that little thing to take the edge off when I go to the dentist. So I can kind of feel yeah. for that. <laughs> so we're humans for that. I had a question while we wait for other questions. Um, so when you are like, you have a busy schedule, like you're seeing patients that give a book today, when you're going to walk into a, an exam room, do you like have to consciously like bring your like go getter, like, you know, mindset, take it down. Like, so you bring your energy down so that you come in like all, do you like take a deep breath or how do you center yourself so that you can go in the room? Like, that is, that you... is a good question. And it's a, it's a funny question. Cause it's kind of hard to answer. Cause it's kind of like a hard thing to talk about, right? Like, like how do you lower your energy level? And that's like such a personal thing. Um, and it doesn't sound very scientific, um, but it absolutely is like a real thing. Like you do have to like stop and take a breath and just, sort of center yourself before walking into another room sometimes because you know what, what may be difficult for owners to see sometimes is okay they're coming in with their bird and and you know that's the most important thing to them that day and absolutely it, it should be the most important thing is bringing their bird in and and focusing on their bird um 
but what they don't recognize is sometimes the vet has already seen like so many other patients and 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 ups and downs as far as like good things and bad things and so like they may have seen just this cute little baby bird recently um or they may have just euthanized a, a, a bird you know but they still have to go into your room and so as a veterinarian like i can't take a lot of that excited energy into a room because maybe too much excitement could potentially like make a bird too excited and like oh my god what's going on with this human um but i also can't take a lot of that sadness into the room either because that's that doesn't come off good either you know for birds definitely can sense our energy um and if i am worked up i will tell you i am a lot more likely to be bit <laughs> Um, and be, and I, I have, I recognize that too, you know, like if, if I've had a lot of things going on and maybe my mind's going in multiple places, like I do need to like stop and center myself. And, and if I, if I get bit, I also walk and go, Oh, I knew I was going to get bit there because I wasn't as maybe centered as I should have been. Oh, wow. And then when you do take a bite, if you do, I'm sure you, you have to have a certain, you have to control your reaction because you can't Absolutely. like like ah <laughs> like this. no because if you do if you're screaming oh my god that just really heightens the energy level and makes it so much worse so like <laughs> I just have to, um I just have to relax you know if, if if I do get bit like okay let me focus on just getting the bird off of my finger and you know we're, we're gonna be okay or like mm-hmm. I'm gonna walk out of the room for one second I'll be right back and then go in the yeah. hallway and then go back in so, yeah oh my okay um Question for you about uh, from Bonnie wants to know where can you get a stethoscope um, to work to desensitize your bird? Like you you can get order like a stethoscopes online. Yeah, like you could go online, you know, uh, Google search or whatever search of you know stethoscope, and you can purchase like a really cheap one. If you're if you're using it to teach your bird to be okay with it, please purchase a cheap one. Do not purchase like ones that are like three hundred dollars. Um, purchase a cheap one. There are cheap ones that are out there. Um, and yeah, just have it around for your bird to see and get used to and, and recognize that it's not a scary thing. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, let's see, let me have a, okay. So, um, Jane asks, uh, when, when I take my two Linnies in for their annual exams, one is so stressed that when he gets home, it takes him like a day to recover. Would sedation help him in his, in, in this instance to re- recover quicker? We hope so, yes, because that particular medication, midazolam, that I mentioned, it's supposed to have like an amnesic effect as well. So it's supposed to make them forget. Um, and it, interestingly, like when you ask people who've taken midazolam, like when they've gone, you know, for medical things, um, some people say that that amnesic effect is really real like they go home and they don't even know where they were um versus other people like I got in a car accident a few years ago and when I I got in two car accidents in the same day actually and when I went to um the ER like they gave me medallion because it's a muscle relaxer and I didn't have any amnesic effect from it so there's variability so you can't say for certain like that that your bird's going to have an amnesic effect but it might and even if it just takes the edge off and they don't have an amnesic effect well then that's still beneficial because they could learn over time that I don't need to be so scared here okay okay I I know that for some uh, I've had this experience myself is just just getting the bird in the carrier to get the bird to the vet can be highly stressful for the bird is yeah. that something where you could you get a prescription ahead of time so that or is it something that's that only a vet administers or well so there's other there's other things that we can use too like so when i gave arroyo at home i didn't use the midazolam at home when we got to work i got the midazolam but at home i used gabapentin now because that's an oral one um and so gabapentin um you do need a prescription for it um but if you it's going to depend on where you are like what state you're in but for example in the state of arizona and other states where i've been licensed to work like i have to have seen a patient within the year to prescribe something like that so like the first time i'm sorry the first time i'm not going to be able to you know give you gabapentin ahead of time but if we talk about it at that visit and you're like hey i'd like to maybe sedate them or you know give them something that takes the edge off in the future Okay, then we can talk about it and see, is it appropriate for your bird for us to do that? Number one, and if it is, sure. Now you can have a medication. It is, you know, here's the dose that you're going to use uh, prior to prior to coming in um, to take the edge off. Um, and yeah, it'll be okay then. Okay, okay. So yeah, and, and obviously don't like go any routes of like coming up with your own self-medication kind of no. thing for your bird. Like, stay with that. It's okay. 
Yeah, exactly. Stay away from that. <laughs> okay. So uh, Kate wanted to ask, okay, this is a good, do birds read human facial expressions kind of like dogs do? Like they say dogs can, you know. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. I think they probably do. It's interesting because like, you know, I mean, I'm reading their facial expressions, right? Like I'm reading their eyes. I think they absolutely, they probably focus more on our eyes than maybe what like our um, lips and nose and that sort of stuff is doing because like they can't, they don't have lips to move very much other than what she did. You know, they don't have nostrils to kind of like, well, like ours, you know, where like things flare out so much. I, I think they're probably way more eye focused than, than anything. Um, so I think they do read our expressions as as we do, but just as we also may be confused about their expressions, they may be confused sometimes about ours. Okay. Do you think if you're doing like rapid blinking, they think you're eye pinning? <laughs> like I think so. At least that's what we humans think. <laughs> that that's what they think. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Let me see if we let's see, Lily. I, uh, this is such a great talk. I love this talk. Um, it's just that. Uh, okay. So uh, I got to uh, start. Our time we blew by that. I gotta give. I gotta announce our giveaway winner for. We do have a giveaway winner for today. Uh, the special. Oh my gosh, they're gonna get the uh, pumpkin spice nutri So yay! And also another uh, Lefebvre product of your bird's choice. And that is going out to Anita. Anita Mossy. Congratulations. You are going to be um, being. Uh, we'll send out some pumpkin spice nutri your way. And also another Lefebvre product of your bird's choosing. Um, okay. And then real quick. So next Friday, uh, September twentieth. Uh, we're going to be on with Lisa Bono and she's going to do a to the great way. And it's going to be prepping for the winter and the holidays. So we'll get a step ahead of that. <laughs> so we get, it's already, we're going to be heading into the holiday season before we know it. So this is a good, <laughs> good primer. Um, Dr. Lamb, again, we got, you got to consider doing that book that we can, <laughs> that, that right. book. Tree. We'll, we'll, we'll publish, we'll make a PDF. We'll publish it here. It's, I love that idea so much. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> Okay, that was awesome. Uh, again, um, I'm so glad these are these are recorded so people can share and they can go back and rewatch because it's just such a great uh, walkthrough of what your bird might be experiencing at the vet. Um, all right, on that note, I'm gonna wish everyone a wonderful, wonderful hol uh, holidays. I'm going holidays next time ne ahead, but wonderful weekend. <laughs> Join us next Friday for the holiday webinar. And Dr. Lamb, uh, Again, thank you so much. And um, and it was great to see you last Saturday as well as uh, our, our tours that were able to make it. I, I really enjoyed meeting you all in person. Um, so um, on that note, have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.